Let's talk about it all with our panel. Guy Benson, political editor at townhall.com. David Kennedy, senior politics writer for U.S. News and World Report. And Lisa Booth, columnist with the Washington Examiner. Okay, Guy, uh, your thoughts about um, the White House pushback to all of this coverage and the coverage itself. Well, I saw the clip there from Keith Ellison saying that this is a Muslim ban, and a lot in a lot of the media has sort of gone along with that. But it is it is not a Muslim ban. You can object to a lot of elements, and I I do object to some of them. But I think that's an inaccurate term based on what we know uh, the facts to be. That being said, I think the rollout of this is almost a clinic on what not to do, uh, because you envision an alternate scenario where the White House. Cons uh, had consultations with the appropriate agencies and lawyers, significant ones ahead of time, where they gave a heads up to allies on Capitol Hill with talking points in advance, where they had carve outs for permanent legal residents, carve outs for people who were in transit, carve outs for you know interpreters and those types of people, and limited the pause moving forward to new issuances. I think we'd be having a completely different conversation about the policy, but that is not what happened, and therefore, uh, there's a debacle that the administration has been cleaning up for the last 48 hours. David, what about uh, Donald Trump tweeting only 109 people out of 325,000 were detained and held for questioning? Big problems at airports caused by Delta computer outage, protesters, and the tears of Senator Schumer. Secretary Kelly said that all is going well with very few problems. Make America safe again. And that was reiterated by Sean Spicer at the briefing about the uh, numbers. The 109 out of 325,000. That data point, I think, is a powerful one for the administration. But I think the guy's point, they got caught behind all of this. And I think they lost the PR war over the weekend because you had pictures all over the country of people at airports. And there was an impression that this was a much wider, this was a much wider net of people that were in trouble, that were being detained, and really that it was only 109. I think, you know, this is an insular White House. And I think to not reach out to the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee to give them a heads up, Bob Corker, who said today he was not briefed. There is questions about whether they really spoke to Department of Homeland Security advisors, Department of Defense, State Department advisors about how to do this. And there's a sense among skeptics, but even among some Republicans, that this is a Steve Bannon and a Jared Kushner policy with President Donald Trump there and that there's not many other people. And I think the problem is they need external validators in Congress. They need interest groups out there. So when this policy hit at 438 on Friday, they had people with that statistic out there, but they're playing catch up now, I think three days later. Lisa. I don't necessarily disagree with those uh, assessments. I mean, I, I think regardless what the administration did, um, there was going to be backlash on uh, an executive order like this, right? So ultimately, they were going to face backlash. But I mean, I do think that there are things that they could have done to help themselves, whether it was get out in front on the issue or, or have carve outs and have it be a little bit more specific specificity regarding the green card issue, right? Because there were. Uh, you know, sort of uh, different changing evolutions and changing stories regarding that, or, or even the carve outs for special immigrant visas regarding uh, interpreters and individuals who have helped or military men and women abroad, and, and they weren't really there. And so now the White House has kind of had to backtrack on a couple of different things, clarify a couple of different things. So there didn't seem to be a lot of preparedness there. But I do think there's a lot of intellectual dishonesty in the way that this conversation is being approached, whether it's what Guy's saying about individuals saying that this is somehow a Muslim ban, uh, even though any religion, anyone, from these seven different countries are not going to be able to come to the United States for a temporary period of time. Yeah, uh, President Trump uh, addressed Trump uh, tweet four. If the ban were announced with a one week notice, the bad would rush into our country during that week. A lot of bad dudes out there. Um, he refers to the bad dudes quite a bit on, on Twitter, uh, Guy. That's his response and the White House response to why it, it happened the way it happened. Yeah, but you you can also pause the issuance of new visas and mitigate that particular counter argument and that problem. But again, I think optics do matter in politics. A lot of us sat at this table and table similar and criticized President Obama for optics, whether it was golfing during certain times. This is something that the White House appears to have a learning curve on. And just the images that you were speaking about over the weekend, these were teed up for the opponents of Donald Trump to go out and say, aha, look at these innocent victims, look at these people that all Americans say, oh, that's not fair, instinctively understand that's not fair. 
while the pushback was virtually non-existent because there were Republicans all over this town scrambling to figure out what was even in this thing, including, according to reports, the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, which is crazy. Like, that sort of thing can't happen. All right, speaking of optics, you have the former president, President Obama, releasing a statement. President Obama is heartened by the level of engagement taking place in communities around the country. In his final official speech as president, he spoke about the important role of citizens and how all Americans have a responsibility to be guardians of our democracy, not just during an election, but every day. Citizens exercising their constitutional right to assemble, organize, and have their voices heard by their elected officials is exactly what we expect to see when American values are at stake. Um, I don't think, let's see, this 10 days, 11 days? <laughs> yeah. How ten days. the former president weighing in on a policy issue? It is extraordinary that uh, it, it only took 10 days for him. I felt like that, that he felt an obligation to, although he never cited President Trump, he was careful not to, to cite President Trump's name he said he disagreed with the policy. But that's what he did on the campaign trail, too. Sure, but that was the campaign trail. Now it is President Trump in the office that Obama knows very well. You know, he took arrows for everything he did. And I think there's a mutual respect among presidents that, that know, hey, we're the only guys that sit here and take all this flack. This every is just day. a very different uh, way to deal with it than, for example, George W. Bush, who did not weigh in. Away. Right. I mean, I mean, I think we all knew that this was going to happen, and, and uh, President Obama wasn't going to sit back and, and give President Trump the same respect that George W. Bush gave him. But look, I think this goes back to sort of the intellectual dishonesty that's going on as well. We all know that there was at least a, a temporary uh, ban on Iraqi uh, individuals or refugees coming into this country for a brief period on, under time uh, under President Obama. Under Granted, the terms were different, but still nonetheless. We also saw that uh, the amount of refugees we were taking in from Syria incredibly small numbers, really up until 2016 when he was leaving office. So, yeah, that really shows a lot of courage. You're doing it on your way out. Mind you, considering the fact that uh, a lot of the problems that uh, happened in Syria were issues and uh, things that he created and exasperated uh, by his inaction. Uh, you know, so there is a lot of intellectual dishonesty in the conversation, but, you know, back to the broader point we were discussing earlier, a lot of that could have been taken care of uh, if the administration maybe had given this a little bit more thought, had done some of these necessary carve-outs, and maybe got out in fr on front of the issue uh, as it was hitting, because I didn't really see people out there sort of combating the narrative that was being drawn. Uh, that anyone would know that would be drawn, uh, given the coverage that D President Trump has been given uh, throughout both the election and since he took office.